Hey guys, welcome back. It's Friday. You're sitting on the Big Game Hunters podcast. Rory McMillan, Jason Berard. It's the spotlight. We have a special guest that we're interviewing today, Mr. Danny Cabrera. He is the co-founder and CEO of the 3D Bio printing company. And we're excited to have you here, Danny. We're excited to learn more about your products, more about what you're doing in the marketplace, and to learn really more about who you are and what you're doing and uh, the direction your company's going. So who is Danny Cabrera? Uh, so it's, I'm, I'm Danny Cabrera. I am uh, one of the co-founders and uh, CEO uh, of BioBots. And uh, BioBots is a pretty new company. We've been around for a year and a half. And uh, we were focusing on empowering people to, to build with life. So we build, we build tools that, that are allowing people to design and engineer living systems. And our first product um, and line of products really happens to be centered around 3D bioprinting. So, and, and when, you, when you call it bioprinting, I guess, you know, you're differentiating yourself from the traditional 3D printing. But, you know, for someone who doesn't really understand the 3D printing space, what does that, what does that really mean? Basically, it's a it's it's like a, it's similar to a regular three D printer in that it's a device that moves in three axes x y and z, okay. um, and it, it it uses a new method that we developed to to deposit a mixture of cells and biocompatible materials to construct three D living tissues, um, one layer at a time. So you can actually with your with your with your biobot you can literally create cell tissue and living tissue. Right, so I mean, it's 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 not it's it sounds like magic, but it's not. I mean, um, living living cells are part of the input. That's part of the material that goes into the bot, um, into the into the bio printer, um, that, and that's what's used to build the living tissues. So the device kind of positions the cells and the biocompatible materials in um, where you know where where the user designs them to be, and that's how you design living tissues. That's so not um it's not magic, but it is it is very different than. Um, in plastic or, or metal or, or ceramics or printing with any material that isn't alive. Wow. And and are these and this is fully producing, this is fully running and you have this out in the marketplace right now? Can or I is buy this one? Or is this just still under research? So I, I mean we started the company back in uh, in twenty fourteen. It was uh, me and a friend of mine. We were building prototypes in a uh, basically in a dorm room on top of a bar here in Philadelphia. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean that, that was that was the goal was to you know, empower people to you know build build with life. Um, and what we did was we sort of we launched a beta program uh, back in uh, last January, so about a year ago. We partnered with um, 50 of the best research labs around the world, and we started building a community so that those labs could collaborate. And uh, what we saw was you know, some of these labs were doing really incredible things. We had sort of researchers over at Karolinska who were printing things like vocal cords and, and heart valves. Uh, researchers wow. at MIT were using it to print blood vessels. And companies were printing uh, miniature tumors that they could use to test uh, new drugs and figure out how to build larger tissues for, for implantation. But anyway, what we did was we, you know, we really, out of that community, we, really, we harvested a lot of the, of the feed that we were getting and really learned a lot from those early clients, um, where the limitations were and uh, what needed to happen in the space and what needed to happen in our products to empower people and continue empowering them to, to do amazing work. And we actually launched um, the BioBot 1 sort of coming out of beta back in uh, back in September of, uh, of last year. And uh, yeah, this device is now, I mean, it's totally out in the market. Um, you can uh, you can buy one. We, uh, we actually, we make them here in this space. I can take you guys on a little tour maybe at some point. Um, if if it's not too crazy. Um, and oh, we'd sure love to we, see it. We'd love to see it. Way too cool. <laughs> but we, we build them here and um, yeah, they're on the market. You can buy one today if you wanted to. Wow, and then and, and you manufacture them, you design them, you build them here, or are they done overseas? <clears throat> so we do we do it all here. Um, we don't, uh, the manufacturing is done in different shops around, um, you know, pre, pre local shops in the United States. Okay. Um, some of these are, you know, we've developed really good relationships with, but all the manufacturing is done here and uh, we do final assembly in house in this space. With it being in the biotech space, is it, would it be, but again, I guess it's because it's the printer itself, but would it be heavily regulated as compared to like a 3D printer that's mostly working with plastics or is it more so about the applications itself that would be regulated? Do you know what I mean? 
Right. So I mean, the applications are what's regulated. Yeah. This uh, this device is um, you know it, it's it's a lab tool. It's a, yeah. it's a the tool that scientists are using to do basic uh, to do basic research. And none of the things are going. I mean, none of the things are going into people yet. Um, it's still all in uh, in research phase. That's what was going to be my my own question is you know understanding that we can create tissues or like you said heart valves and everything like that. Organs. Anything. Um, right. You know, I think that's, uh, I guess, I think that that would be the future of, of where we're going in terms of uh, biotech and, and everything like that. But um, I guess, what would be the, how would you do that? Like, do you have that, in the, do you have that concept in terms of how you would take something from your printer and put it into a, a body? Or are we just not quite there yet? It needs to be more research, needs to have more data. Yeah, I mean, so we're definitely not there yet. And I definitely, I mean, I want to make that clear. Um, yeah. And when we, when we do get there, the things that are closest, uh, sort of the low, low hanging fruit, are things like um, like skin and cartilage that are that aren't vascular uh, vascularized or simple simpler tissues. Right. But um, and and yeah, I mean the, the dream here and, and the the hope is that you know with this technology someday um, we'll be able to engineer organs out of a patient's own cells to eliminate the organ waiting list. But um, but yeah, I mean like I said, we're we're definitely not not there yet. <clears throat> and how does what is what does it look like? What would the workflow look like? It would look like having a patient come into the clinic. You would take um, the defective, um, you know, defective organ, something that needs to needs to be replaced. And what we do is um, we take some uh, medical images of that the patient's organs um, and it's culture some of that patient's own cells enough to be able to replicate the organ. And then using the the medical images, the the scans basically of the patient's organs, we could recreate. Um, a file that you know, that could instruct a printer to to build that out of the patient's own cells. Um, once once the tissue or the organ has been printed, it could be cultured and basically in a bioreactor and matured over a series of days or weeks, and then implanted. But again, that's all. Very, this is just want to make it crystal clear that that's hypothetical. Yeah. That this isn't this is not reality right now. It's definitely still a dream. That's well. That, and that, that's the exciting it, part. Yeah, I like it's, it. It's amazing. So winding yeah. it back a bit more towards you know geared towards you and as an entrepreneur and sort of how you started like like where did you get I don't know if it was an an idea like let's let's back it up in terms of like how you got to even having a a, a product on the market that is revolutionary and uh, has you know amazing applications that can happen hypothetically down the road. It takes a special person to do something like this. You're obviously you were in school. Um, and were, were you just fascinated with robotics? Were you fascinated with, like, how did you get to where mm -hmm. you are sort of thing right now? Where did you start? So, I mean, I, I was, um, I was in school, I was studying computer science and biology at, uh, at Penn here in, here in Philly. And I mean, it was more than anything, just, uh, fascinated and, and motivated by biology and how, how complex the things that the, the biology could, can build. And um, looking into the future, I, I definitely saw that you know gaining control over that as an engineering discipline was going to be very valuable and was going to enable us to build incredible things. So, what I, as a computer scientist, sort of the world that I imagined was one where like curing a disease was as easy as typing a few lines of code on on your laptop, and where designing a new organism could be done using standard software that runs on your laptop. And all you needed to do was press print. Right. Um, so that was uh, that's what I mean. That, that's where the idea came for me, and some of the applications that you know that you can imagine in this is one curing, I mean, engineering living things to to like build new organisms that can suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and revert global warming, or you know, engineering organs out of a patient's own cells to eliminate the organ waiting list, or even designing new drugs for individual patients instead of entire populations. So that um, you know, that's that's where that started. But actually, working on the bioprinter as the manifestation or the product um, was uh, that's when I started working with my with our co-founder Ricardo. He um, he was working on three D printing and uh, working with a mentor, a sort of a scientific mentor who was also a mentor of mine in a separate project. Wow! And um, so we so he he was building his own three D printer and um, got me involved once uh, when, once he had started so trying to transform it into a bioprinter. And that's, um, yeah, I got involved with it and saw, could, could see a couple steps ahead and, and say, well, you know, bioprinting is just in its infancy right now, but it's, it's really a great tool to turn what is currently a very manual process into lines of code. 
So if we can scale this and rebuild the entire laboratory infrastructure around 3D biology and do it in an automated way, yeah. then it would be really powerful and it could create this future that I was imagining um, back when I was in school. Interesting. Wow. So the beauty is actually in the code. The science and everything is in the code or is in the actual printer itself. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? It's a combination of both, wouldn't it be? It's definitely a combination of both. It's sort of blending uh, computer science with biology and robotics um, that you get you know, really what the core of, of biobots is. Okay, and then I wanted to, we talk a lot about entrepreneurship on here podcast. A lot of our community, Danny, um, is, is interested to know how companies, you know, start and, and how they become to be into, into conception is, you know, you co-founded Biobots. Starting a company like this has to take a lot of money. You have to raise money from somewhere. You have to have investors. You have to create awareness. This is something, you know, I don't even know where to start starting a company like this. Did, did you have to, uh, you know, raise money? Did you have to go to VCs to get this company off the ground? How was it funded, and, uh, and and for our audience, how would you recommend if they were to start potentially a three D company or start their company on their own? How would they go about getting something on the market like this? Right. So I mean, we actually, you know, the, at the very beginning, our first prototypes were were self funded. So they were primarily Ricky, who had, I mean, he he had out of school for a year and was working, so he had a little bit of extra cash to be able to dedicate to this, and you know, it was really his uh, like his his pet project that he was working on. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about um, like no no more than the two or three thousand dollars to build the first prototypes. <clears throat> wow. um, and at the time when I was still in school, what we, what we did the way the way that we got started was actually going through a, a competition at Penn that um, it was like an innovation competition, and the like prize money was five thousand dollars. So we we were able to win that, and that got us five k, which was enough for for me to turn down um, getting a PhD and enough to turn down Ricky going off to to med school, and we were able to dedicate you know just basically spend a summer full time working on. I'm thinking about how do we build a company around this prototype. So I, I mean, I, I started working with a lot of um, who we, people who ended up becoming our first clients. Um, I wrote some of the initial initial software that you know, let, let the thing work, and Ricky was working on the robotics of it. <clears throat> but it was basically just us two, um, getting this thing up and running. So there was um, there was a point there where we definitely needed more money to be to be able to keep to keep going. We, I mean, we weren't. You know, we, couldn't, we couldn't actually manufacture anything. We didn't really have a product. It was more like a prototype. So, and, and also we, we were looking for people who had more business, uh, sort, of, sort of like had, had started companies before um, and could coach us a little bit because we were very green. I mean, neither of us had a, any business background whatsoever. So so we, we, we were looking for different opportunities. We settled that on, on trying to go for an accelerator, um, sort of a startup accelerator here in the U.S., that, uh, where we could have some like intense um, couple of month period to to learn from other people, have our bills paid for, and also just like figure out like what metrics we were looking to hit, and even like what you know what metrics did we, we want to set as a as a business. Um, so that I mean, we were really lucky we were able to um, get into Dream at Health, which is uh, an accelerator here in Philly. They gave us some um, some cash and really match us up with a great set of advisors. Um, set up a temporary board for us and you know wow. started holding us accountable for for deliverables and really started getting the business up and running with us so from that um, I mean basically right off of that we we designed the beta program and uh, it was an extremely successful program we were selling these units for um, five thousand dollars we partnered off with some of the best researchers in the world and um, really got got us on the radar wow so that was the, that was wow. a start then from from the success of the beta program, um, we were able to um, to raise to raise some some seed capital, primarily from angels and a few uh, seed stage funds. It was about a million and a half um, dollar round, and um, yeah, I mean from that we grew out the team. There are now there are nine of us who work here. Um, mixtures of robotics engineers, software engineers, um, bio ink engineers. What we call it wetware. And uh, we've got marketing and, and business development here as well. So it's um, that's been pretty much the full the full journey. And, and a few months ago, we launched the Biobot One. We just started gearing up the manufacturing. Launched the first. I mean, um, shipped shipped the first of those units wow. about a week ago. And um, we've launched whole uh, new bioink kits. Sort of a but the bioinks are like what actually goes into the bot. Sort of like how your inkjet printer at home has different colored cartridges yeah. for, you know, it's sort of like that for different tissues. Um, and it's just, it's a, it's a really exciting area of business. Um, and we're just getting started in that. We've launched a few of those now. Um, it's all up on our website, biobots.com. And uh, but I think that, you know, that sort of brings you around the full story. 
Excellent, wow. excellent. So what? So what's the next step for BioBots then? Um, so we're, we're on building. The agenda? We're building. I mean, we're focusing a lot on uh, on improving the software experience here. Um, really <laughs> imagining what the digital workflow of our clients looks like from start to finish. So from designing a file all the way through to analyzing the results of an experiment and figuring out. I mean, the the tools that exist for doing this stuff today are. Like they're, they're stuck in the Stone Age, basically. They're terrible. And so we're, we're kind of um, building some better tools to help accelerate the pace of their research. As far as the, um, the robotics and, and whatnot, we're really focused on supporting our current clients and you know, continuing to grow our client base. We have a ton of interest on this new device, and um, you know, our manufacturing is still struggling to, to catch up wow. to, to the demand. And that's, a, that's also another focus. <clears throat> and then on the... Um, on the wetware side, we've, we've got a, a lot of really exciting stuff. We're actually um, starting to make a lot of the a lot of our experiments open source, so that um, people in our community can start seeing exactly what kind of data they can expect to see and begin contributing even to, to this uh, you know, open source buying sort of developing, sort of giving the power to the people um, to our clients. Do you have to be a, a, a like a computer software person or or having that engineering capacity to operate the machine? Like, would I have to really understand the code and everything like that to operate it once I once I had it? Yeah. No, so I mean, it's it's incredibly easy to use. It's um, we've, we've designed it so that I mean, in, in the past to use this technology, they'd need to have an entire team of engineers, biologists, material scientists, and so on. Um, and the devices are huge, but our devices are they're little, they're small boxes, or one one by one by one feet. Um, they're <laughs> So they fit on your desktop. They're, the interface on the software end is, is beautiful, and it's, it's really easy to use, very intuitive. Um, all you need to do is you know, have, have a file that you, that you want to print. And huh. uh, it's, it's, about as, it's, it's about as easy as using a, a, a traditional 3D printer. Wow. Wow. So what would be one thing that you've learned now, as, as you said, you weren't in a business, you didn't have the business mindset a year ago. Now that you have a business, you have employees, you have operations, what's the one thing that you've probably learned the, the most in the last year? About yourself oh, or just about anything? <laughs> about everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think the, the main thing that matters is, uh, the main thing that I've learned is that it really is all about the people. Um, it, uh, whenever whenever I talk about about the company, I usually and people always ask about the about the the product and the technology, the how we got the idea, but but really what, what's important now is is the people who are, who are working with us and how incredible they are at continuing to not only build great products and innovate and innovative solutions, but actually just right, being, so being great at getting along yeah, with each yeah, other yeah, and like, build, like, having an environment here um, in the office and you know, within the company that's so collaborative that there's no, you know, that it would be almost impossible to replicate this. Yeah. And that, that's, um, you know, outside of any IP or, or market advantage that we might have, that's the one thing that is gonna keep us ahead of the game. I love the saying, it's like, never doubt that a small group of uh, committed yeah, individuals can change uh, the world. Indeed, it's it. the only thing that ever has, and that's the uh, Margaret Thatcher <laughs> quote. So it sounds like that's what we've got building there, something pretty pretty yeah. special. And you, see, you seem you seem like a, you know, su such, a, such a young guy, and you've accomplished so much, you know, you're, you're, you're setting the benchmark for your industry. Um, and it's, it's, so, it's so great, it's so great to have him, have him on this show today. It's, it's really interesting. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm blown away by what this what what this product actually does and, and what he's done. Well, listen, Danny, you know I I know that you've probably got a lot of work to get back to, um, so we want to thank you so much for joining us on the show. Where can people find you? Where can people find Biobots? Um, Biobots.com is okay. our is our website. That's definitely the best place um, to just to, to start you know, learning about us. And we do have uh, Twitter pages, uh, a Twitter page and a Facebook page. Okay. they're on they're on on Biobots.com. That's uh, the place to start. Okay, perfect. And uh, Danny Cabrera, co-founder, CEO, BioBots. I'm excited to see where it goes, and I'm, uh, you know, the next couple of years, and it's going to be amazing. What, uh, what, hopefully, you know, technology like the one that you've created can, uh, how it can change the world. So, thanks so much for joining us. It's the spotlight, Big Game Hunters. Danny Cabrera, BioBots. Thank you so much for joining us, Jason Broad, Roy McMillan. See you next, see you week. next week.